What's up guys? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 38. It's an awesome episode. First, we head out to Red Rock where we play a 2-5 session and get into some huge pots. Um, and then this morning I played 10-20, which is the highest I've ever played. It ended up being a game where we straddled and double straddled, so it was a 10-20-40-80 game for a lot of the hands. Uh, really cool stuff. I'll have all the footage from that at the end of the episode. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get into it. We get called for the 2-5 game and it looks great. There's only one other player at the table that I recognize. In the first interesting hand, we're dealt ace-5 of clubs in the hijack. It folds to us, we raise to 15. The cutoff calls and the big blind calls as well. The three of us see the flop, it comes jack-8-7 with two clubs. We've got a flush draw with one over and a backdoor straight draw. The big blind checks, this is a good flop for us to see bet, I bet 20. The cutoff folds. While the big blind calls, we're heads up. The turn is the four of spades, giving us a gut shot to go along with our flush draw. The big blind checks, I bet 70 into 87. It's 80% 80 of the pot. I like betting large here because it'll get a lot of folds, which is fine because after all, we only have ace high. If the opponent calls, that's okay too. There'll be plenty of cards that will improve our hand on the river. In this instance, our opponent folds and we win. Next, we pick up 10-9 of spades on the button. Player in middle position opens to 20. I could call, and every once in a while I will, but in general, I like to take control of the hand if I'm gonna play suited connectors. I three bet to 70, it folds back to the player in middle position, and he folds. Now we've got pocket sixes in the small blind. Two players in early position limp in, a player in middle position raises to 25. The cutoff calls, I call, the big blind and the two limpers also call. There are six players involved in the hand. The flop comes ace six three with two hearts. We've got middle set on an ace high board with multiple opponents. It's a dream scenario. I check, hoping someone will bet their ace or flush draw. Unfortunately, the initial preflop raiser doesn't fire out, but the cutoff comes through to save the day and bets 55. Sometimes I flat to trap when there are fewer people in the hand or when I have position. Here that seems too risky, I raise to 175. It folds back to the cutoff and he lays down his hand showing an ace face up. I wasn't able to make as much money as I hoped on that hand. The good news is that a few hands later, we get aces. A player under the gun limps in, the button limps, the small blind folds, I'm in the big blind and raise to 30. The under the gun limper now three bets to 100, the button folds, I four bet to 250, hoping the player under the gun limps pocket kings or ace king and wants to get it all in. The opponent snap shoves for 750. I call, the flop comes ace five deuce, rainbow. It'll be tough for us to lose this one now. The turn is the king of diamonds and the river is another five giving us a full house. I assumed the opponent had pocket kings or ace king. To everyone's surprise, he ended up having queen jack of diamonds and actually turned the royal flush draw, but luckily bricked everything. I feel bad for him, you know, nothing he could really do differently in that hand preflop with something as good as Queen Jack. It's just a standard limp, five bet shove situation. He just happened to run into aces. Classic cooler. I've got about 1800 in front of me and have ace three of spades on the button. The player under the gun plus one opens the 15. He had just gotten stacked about two hands earlier. Two players call. I have a hand that I'm very happy to see a flop with in a multi-way pot in position. I call, the small blind and big blind also call. Six of us see the flop and it comes a 7 3 with two clubs and one diamond. We've got top and bottom pair, the blinds check, the initial preflop raiser bets 50, folds to me. The preflop raiser had been playing solid and sometimes limps in preflop. The fact that he opened and then bet into five other opponents on the flop makes me think he's got either aces, ace-king, or ace-queen. Aces is extremely unlikely since there's only one combo left. I want to put out a raise because my hand is vulnerable to being counterfeited, 
but I don't want to make it too big so that the initial preflop raiser can find a fold with top pair and a good kicker. I raise to 120. The blinds fold. After tanking for some time, the opponent under the gun plus one calls for 70 more. The turn is the eight of diamonds. Now there are two possible flush draws. The opponent checks to us. The turn is a relatively safe card. There's no reason to think that our opponent has ace eight or anything else that has this beat. I bet 200. Again, the player goes into the tank before making the call. The river comes out, it's the 10 of diamonds, completing the backdoor flush. The opponent checks one last time. There are plenty of combinations of hands that beat us now. Flushes, straights, sets, better two pair hands. There's really no reason to believe our opponent would have any of those though. When considering whether to check or bet, another concern you might have is what worse hand is going to call a bet. Well, in 2-5, you might be surprised how light people will call you. In this case, I have a few things going for me. One is that the front door flush missed, so I might get called lighter just because of that. Another thing is that the opponent just got stacked in a previous hand and is probably still on tilt. Also, people are more likely to call rivers light since that ends the hand and they can see what their opponent has. I announce a bet of 400 and put out four stacks of green chips. I can see the wheels turning in my opponent's head. He wants to fold, but can't get himself to do it. He calls, I turn over the ace three of spades, and he shows ace king offsuit. He's not too thrilled that a hand that he had dominated preflop was able to win a large pot. And that's the last big one that I took down for the night. At the high point, I'm up over 1500, but play for two more hours without anything significant happening and lose a little back before racking up. Just finished the session here at Red Rock. I won 14.45, had a really good day. Didn't have too many tough decisions, ran really well. I got it in with aces versus the Queen Jack of Diamonds. That was awesome. Um, pretty big gift that doesn't happen too often. And then the ace three of spades hand happened maybe 15 or 20 minutes later. Um, it was against someone who, he just, he just told me actually when I was cashing out that he watches the vlog and to go easy on him. Uh, He's a really nice guy, super cool. Um, so I'm about to head out. I'm actually going to Aria. There's someone in town from Toronto and they wanted to grab a beer. So that's what I'm gonna go, uh, that's what I'm gonna go do. Got to Aria. See these guys. I think uh, they're right here. Here they are. How's it going, man? Awesome. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. How are you doing, Dave? Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. Dave. Thanks for coming out. How are you going? Good, man. I just uh, finished up a session at Red Rock. Yeah. And uh, yeah, went well. So you guys are from Toronto? Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. You guys want to grab a drink? Oh, yeah, awesome. Sure. We brought you that cool. along from a real hockey city. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, man. Thanks a lot. No problem. Yeah, let's grab a beer. Steve, his brother Dave and I go over to the bar for a few drinks. We had some good conversations for about two hours. It was a great way to wind down the night after a nice session of poker. Just uh, finished uh, meeting up with Steve and Dave. Super cool guys, man. Awesome that they uh, brought me this hat. It's a lot of fun. I always enjoy just hanging out with people who watch the vlogs and um, talking about poker and stuff. So. It's been a good day. Glad that I decided to film it. Time to go home, maybe watch Westworld and go to bed. That's it for part one of this episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. As promised, I'm going to show you guys how the uh, short 1020 session that I played this morning went. Um, I've had a really good month so far. I think I'm up 7,000 and uh, hadn't really had a losing day. Um, I've had, I had one losing session before yesterday, but then I played 2-5 uh, at Red Rock and lost 1,500 in two hours. And then um, went out to Bellagio to have a drink with one of the viewers. 
That's when my friend Aaron came over. He plays a lot higher. He uh, he was in the 10-20 game, and they were shorthanded. They kind of needed some more people to keep the game going. So he offered me an $800 free roll, and of course I couldn't uh, pass that up. So I jumped in. So uh, we're gonna get into that in just a second. Um, one one more announcement, actually two more announcements. Uh, we played on the Bellagio live stream. Andrew and I had a meetup game, and uh, that went really well. A big part of it was we wanted to raise money for hurricane relief, so we went around, we had a big jar, and uh, we ended up raising $1,200 for hurricane relief, which is awesome. Thanks to everybody who came out for that game, and thanks to everybody who donated money. I'll have a link down below in the description box if you're interested in uh, seeing how the live stream went. Also, uh, I've got the new t-shirts out. This is one of them. The flop is good. Um, guaranteed to make you run well and uh, you know you'll get all the ladies if you wear them it's just a fact so uh, please pick one up to support the channel I really appreciate it let's go ahead and get into the 1020 session okay up here playing 1020 buddy Aaron gave me an $800 free roll got it in against him twice the first two hands we ran it <laughs> twice Got it in with Ace you Jack. You got lucky. Tell him how lucky you got. I got it in with Ace Jack versus 10 5 of hearts. I, I, he was way behind. And uh, we ran it twice. We chopped it. Second time, I got it in with King 10 of hearts behind versus again. King 3 of spades. And uh, won both runouts. So, doubled up. Got uh, 1,700 in front of me now. And uh, we're going after him. I'm going to I'm gonna get all his money. Good, good so. luck. Here I have Ace Deuce of Diamonds. My buddy Aaron and I agreed to run out one board for $400. He has 5-4 offsuits. The flop comes king 10 8, so we're in great shape and you can see what happens from here. So we're doing this for 400. Okay. That's not good for you. I need a spade. Boom, I made a pair. Oh, what is this? <laughs> what is that? I made that? a pair. Nine. Is that anything? After winning that pot, my stack is at the high point for the night. I ran up the $800 free roll to $2,300, then lost $100 back before heading to the cashier. What, man? Thanks for the free roll, man. Yeah, hey, I got you. Just ended my session of 1020. First time ever playing that high. You play. In a different room when you play that high, which is pretty cool. Um, I lost 1500 earlier today, bluffed off pretty much all of it at the Red Rock playing 2 5. Came out here to have a drink with one of the viewers, his name is Tom, a uh, really cool guy, and that's when I ran into my buddy Aaron. We came up together kind of playing 2 5 at the Red Rock when I first moved out here, and then. Um, he said he'd give me an $800 free roll just to keep the 1020 game going because they were playing shorthanded. So uh, I doubled up against him. Actually, the first two hands I played, I went all in both times. We ran it twice on uh, both occasions. We split the first one. I had Ace Jack versus 10 5 or 10 6 of hearts, and uh, we chopped it the second time. The very next hand, I had King 10 of hearts versus King 3 of spades, and won both runouts. After that, I kind of kind of played pretty tight until uh, this one hand where I straddled. Player opened to 120. My buddy Aaron called. I shoved with uh, Ace Deuce of Diamonds. My buddy turned over 4-5 offsuit and said, "If you want to do it for 400, we'll do that." So uh, that's what I did. Hold on. Not out, here. Oh. Jimmy, call Jimmy! Call Jimmy! Look at those. Call Jimmy! Where can Jimmy? <laughs> right, Look at those dance moves, man. That's what happens at 4 a.m. at the Bellagio. So anyway, uh, we we ran it once for 400, and I uh, I made a pair of deuces, and that was good. So I cashed out. It was a $1,400 winner for the day, which is nice because. Uh, all together with the $1,500 loss at Red Rock, I only ended up losing $100, paid back the $800 to my buddy who gave me the free roll, and that's, that's it for my first experience playing 1020.
let me tell you guys what's up. My boy Brad here. Solid vlog. Solid. Thank you. He's deep in the vlog game. I mean, if you're watching this, you're probably already on his channel, but it does good work. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Your drink's empty. What do we do? Hugs. Hugs. Hugs.